In this video for on-screen view takeoff, we're going to review the various commands that allow us to do takeoff in the on-screen view. Now, the first one that we're going to look at is a start new run with item. This is perhaps one of the most highly used commands. Now, the start new run with item allows us to verify all our scope items. It allows us to set elevations and also various toggles for the various different settings. It also allows us to start out with an item. That could, item could be a valve, could be a flange, could be a coupling, could be a hotspot. Now, I'm going to work on this particular part of the drawing initially. All right, And we can see this is an 8-inch chilled water return down to the basement, and we're on the first floor. So that means this is a vertical pipe here before it becomes up and starts running horizontally. So let me uh, check my scopes. Yeah, it's chill water return. Okay? And the floor and all that stuff is correct. My starting elevation is going to be zero because I'm going to do it from the floor up. Now I'm going to continue horizontal at 12 feet. Now that would be the end at elevation command. And that is the height that we're going to do our first vertical piece. I'm also, since I can start in the room with an item, in this case I'm going to start out with a riser clamp. And I could verify my size is 8 inch. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click on where that pipe comes up from the basement. And then as I go along, you'll see it put the X in there, which indicates a vertical for us. So just continuing along, um, I have a pipe size change here of 6, just as a little reminder. All you have to do is use put the new dimension in this change dims in the run field, and it'll automatically put that reducer in for you. And you would just continue down clicking the branches if you'd like to click the branches and keep an eye out for size changes. So let's see what that did for us. I'm going to click on the X. And you can see we have that vertical pipe right at the beginning. It's 0 feet up to 12 feet with an elbow at the top and a riser clamp at the bottom. Now let's take a look at start new room with item once again. So I'm going to bring up that command. The situation that we're looking at where we're going to use this happens to be this pipe right here which is a steam vent and as you notice it just goes from floor to floor it doesn't go horizontal it just passes through the floor so we're going to be able to take advantage of this vertical run only option in the lower left corner here of this window now I'm going to verify my system is correct I'm going to use the steam low pressure for this I also have to check my elevations for that vertical run only so I'm going to start out at 0 and I'm going to go up to 14 to bring it up to the slab level for the next floor up. When I click OK and I come over here and I put in this vertical run only, you'll notice the drag line is not attached because this was a vertical only. So I will end my run here just to verify the run is ended. And I'm going to click on that vertical piece and we can see that it started out at 0 and it ended at 14. Now you can go edit these items what you want to begin with and end with and so I'm going to edit the first item and I'm going to put a riser clamp there and I'm going to edit the last item and there I'm going to put a floor sleeve. Now we did not have to edit those items but I wanted you to see that you could edit items once they're in the vertical. So that was just as a real quick review using the vertical run only for pipes that just need to be vertical without any horizontal part to them. Okay, the next command we're going to learn is to use the branch from command. Now this is very useful if you're going to branch from and come out straight horizontal out of the size of the pipe. So I'm going to use that for this situation right here where I've got this pipe coming out a 3 inch off that 8 inch. Okay? So when I hit the branch from command it popped up this little window here that wants me to verify the size. So I'm going to put a 3 in here and now I'm going to just click where that branch starts and then I would go along and continue to take this pipe off as it works its way down the drawing. So let's see what it did for us here. If I go and click on this warm spot you can see that it inserted a reducing T for me an 8 by 8 by 3 reducing T. 
Of course, the brand specifications will probably change that into a weld lip. It displays as a 8x8 reducing T on the screen. So that was very simple, the branch from command when you want to come out straight. Let's take a look at a very popular command called branch from with elbow. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using it over here in this particular area. But these warm spots and hot spot circles are quite large and they're starting to cover up the drawing. So let me show you a little quick tip. So this little button up here allows us to change the size of the target radius for us. And I'm going to use this and reduce the size of these circles, which is our find radius, down till I could actually see the drawing pretty clearly. Now it does make it a little more difficult to click on those hot spots, um, but it also allows me to see things better. Now, using that branch from with elbow, what I have is I have a three inch branch that comes along and goes off and feeds this part of the building. Now, if I took that off with just a simple branch from command, this pipe would run into that pipe. So I need to put an elbow either on the top or the bottom, most likely the top, um, to make sure that that clears that other main. So here I am, branch from with elbow. I'm going to pick my size, which is, happens to be a three inch. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna click on the hot spot that I left behind. And then I would just keep following down my drawing taking off this system. Now, if I come back and see what this did, I can click on here and we can see, well, there's a 90 degree elbow now. And because this is 2D, we can't see the fitting below it. But what I can do is click the pipe just before that. And I'll see that pipe and then that reducing T, just like we saw on the return line that was automatically generated. So by using the branch with elbow, it automatically inserted a T and an elbow to take us and let us to continue on taking off this branch with the fitting in it that we needed, which happened to be that elbow. Working our way down the commands, our next command I'd like to take a look at is the branch with elevation change. So in this scenario, I happen to have this pipe, which is running at 12 foot uh, across here. And I've got this branch that's coming off that needs to go under these other two mains. So knowing this is 12 feet, I'll probably drop this down to 11 feet so it can clear it. So let me try the branch with elevation change and take a look at this. Well, here it allows me to put a size in and I could verify that size happens to be two inch in this case. It also allows me to pick a drop or rise to elevation. So I said I'd probably go with 11 feet to get it underneath that 12 foot pipes that are going across there. And so I've got just to verify that it's going to be a branch with a two inch diameter and we're going to drop it to 11 feet. So we'll click on here. I'll go click where that branch is and follow along and take that off. Now, if I click on this X, this vertical that appeared, we could see that it inserted a T reducing. At the top of that, it dropped the pipe down one foot and it put a 90 degree elbow on the bottom. So branch from an elevation change. That's when you want to branch off a pipe and you want the branch at a different height than the pipe you're coming off of. Okay, I want to take a look at another situation in which the branch from command would be useful. Now I've got a situation here where I ended these pipes and I need to continue them on. So although this is technically a main, it really is a branch from. And branch from also works with like a connect to type command. So if I choose branch from and I verify the size up here and this is six inch, I'm gonna click okay and I'm going to click where I want it to continue from and I continue working my way down the drawing until I see the next size break. Well, in this case, the pipe is going to go up. So let's see that, how that works again. You'll notice over here that it did put in that 90 degree elbow. So I'll do this again with another pipe. Now these happen to be four inch. So simply, You've got a main, you got a pipe taken off, you want to connect to that pipe, whether you want to come off the side or you want to go straight with it. It's the branch from command, 
you verify the size, you click where you want to start from, and it will follow you along as you go along down the drawing. Let's take a look at the add, drop, rise command. So in this situation here, I've got these pipes that are coming up from this floor and they're going up to the next floor. So I need to add a rise to these and there's going to be an elbow and some kind of length of, of vertical change. So I'm going to try out the add, drop, rise command here. And it's asking for the size and I'm going to verify it's six inch. And then here's an important part. What is the height it's raising to? So I'm going to put in 16 to get it stubbed up. So we could also end this. We could end it with a sleeve or, or a riser clamp or a valve or a cap, whatever we might be. I'm just going to leave it as hotspot for now. And when I click on code, OK, and I click on that, you'll see the drag line stop because all it did was add that drop or rise. If I click on this X, you'll see that it put the 90 degree elbow and then the four feet of pipe in there for me to get me from 12 feet to 16 feet. So that's simply the add drop rise command. Now if I want to do multiple add drop rises because I have to bring these other three pipes up also, I'm going to use the multi add drop rise. And the first one I'm going to do is again is a six inch and it's going to go to 16 feet. So I'm going to click OK and I put the add drop rise right there. The next two are four inch. Continuing the same command, I'm just going to touch four, and I'll put one here, and I'll put one there. So during the multi-add drop rise, you can change sizes as you're doing it. So in this case, these chill water lines again are six inch, so I'll pick the dimension six, and I'll bring those two up with the riser, and then I'll switch over to four inch for the smaller lines. That's the multi-add drop rise. Automatically we'll insert the 90 for you and we'll insert the vertical pipe. If we choose to do this add drop rise in the middle of a run, and I'll just do a single one, what it will do here is rather than putting a 90, it inserted a T and then the vertical. That's add drop rise and multi add drop rise. Next, I want to show you how we change elevations while we're taking off a pipe. So I'm going to simulate there's an elevation change at this change direction also. So let me start taking this pipe off and I'm going to use the branch from command since it's a continuation of the existing pipe and I'll put my size three inch in and I'm going to click on that hotspot and come over here. And now I want to change elevations. There's several ways of doing that. One way is using this command right here with the elevation change. And you'll notice when we do that, we have a choice right here to change elevation. I may pick 11 feet for that elevation change and I'll hit OK. And you'll see the X showed up on the screen and I will continue on and I'll end that run. So let me show you the vertical X, what appeared, and here's a 90 degree elbow. That was the first one, and then there's the second one. So here the pipe dropped down a foot. Another way of doing this is if I'm coming along with this pipe and I get to here and I want to change the elevation, I can go to my elevation pick list provided my settings window is open, and I could pick the elevation I want to go to and now we continue down the drawing. And again, it put the two 90s in the vertical pipe in there between them for me. Um, a third way of doing this elevation change, and I'll again just do this on this other line that happens to be two inch. And I'll start from here. And I want to do the elevation change here. We also have these buttons on the mouse menu. And this button here will bring the pipe down one foot. So if we take a look at that, you can see it put the one foot of vertical pipe in there. And then I can just go along and end the run. In fact, if I want to do more than one foot, I can click on this place where it's going to change elevation. And I'll hit this multiple times. And each time I do it, you notice it's adding 
that together. It's one foot at a time. I just clicked it twice and now it went down two feet. So there's three ways of changing elevation. You could use the change elevation button, you could use the elevation pick list, or you could use these command buttons on the mouse menu. Let's take a look at the command for multi-branch pairs. And this means pairs take off. Up until this point, we've been doing continuous takeoff where it's following us continuously as we move the mouse. But when I do the multi-branch pairs, I'm going to use this to take off these branches, these multiple branches that occur on this drawing. So I'm going to choose multi-branch pairs. I'm going to confirm the size that was inch and a quarter. I'll click OK. And I'm going to click this first start point. And now I'm in a pairs mode. It's going to follow me to the next stop point. And notice the drag line stop. It's looking for a new starting point. And I'll click on this and come over and do that new starting point. Now I'm going to go start, stop, start, stop. Again, I could just go around the drawing, taking off all these things in their pair mode. Now let's see what that did for us. When I click on this, you'll see it automatically inserted the reducing T at that start point. It made this a hot spot at its end point, but once I started from it again, it put that 90 degree elbow in for me. So I can go around the drawing and I'll just do these, same thing, multi-branch pairs. I'm going to take off the pair points, and I've got a pair that goes from this hot spot down to here, and a pair that goes from this hot spot down to here. The next command that we're going to look at is the multi-branch pairs with elbow 90. So in this situation, I probably should have a T with a 90 on top and it comes out and feeds this box. Same thing here, it would be a T and then good practice, piping practice would be to put a 90 on top of that. And we've got this occurring in multiple different places on this drawing. So using the multi-branch pairs with elbow 90, I'm going to confirm my size and I'm going to go with inch and a quarter for this. And I'm just going to click OK and I'll connect to this main and come out here and in the pairs mode that was a start and a stop and I'll start from here and I'll stop I'll start stop start stop in fact I could do these two branches here I'll start from here out to there and I'll start from here out to there so I can quickly go around the drawing and it's inserting a 90 degree elbow wherever I start from and then it puts a hot spot where I end and then it'll put a 90 degree elbow where I start from again and a hot spot where I end so let me end that command and we'll take a look and see what happened so when I click on this we can see there's the 90 degree elbow in our audit trail and if I click on the pipe just before that I can see well there's the reducing T that it put in for me if I come up here where I ended that run and then I started with a 90 well it actually put in two 90's for me because 190 for the change of direction and 190 because I used the command to branch with an elbow so yeah they're two 90's stacked on top of each other probably not a bad piping practice when you think you may need to change elevation because um, this would probably be sort of a swing joint to get out to that now what did it do over here here it gave me the 90 degree elbow and if I look I could see it also put in the T for me which would be that T right there okay. so that's multi-branch pairs with elbow it allows me to go around the drawing and do branches off the main with the 90 also besides the, the T that we got with the multi-branch pairs The next command we're going to look at is called Takeoff Mode Area. And this allows us to measure an area on the drawing and it will calculate out the square feet or the square meters if we were in metric. So I'm going to actually take off this kind of very convoluted area just to show you the power of what it can do with just about any shape. So let me start this command, Takeoff Mode Area, and I'm just going to follow along to the shape of this area.
Now to do a curve, you've got to kind of break it into segments. Now, I don't actually need to close that area out. I can end that run. And you see what's new, it measured out 4,490 square feet for that area. Now, no piping items are available in area. I did create a little shortcut to a library item called square feet. And so there's square feet, and then there's that area. And when I click OK, you'll see it reports that square feet for us right down here in the audit trail, and it'll also show up in reports. That's takeoff mode area. This next command is called takeoff mode counted. This allows us to go around the drawing and count up multiple items very quickly and very easily. So I'm going to launch that counted mode and I'm going to go around and I'm going to click for these CAV boxes. Now I can just navigate around the screen and just count all these up where they might happen to occur. Once I'm done counting, I could end that run and it pops up the line information for that count. And you can see I counted 11 places. Now, I could put any one of these things out on that drawing, but in this case, I decided to make them a symbol. And that symbol that I created was called the CAV. So I'm going to select that symbol. And you can see I now have the symbol CAV. It occurred in 11 places up to this point. And when I click OK, the CAV shows up on the screen in the color of the system that I picked and is counted and the quantity is in the audit trail. So the counted mode allows, it's great for counting up pieces of equipment, fixtures, specialties, all kinds of stuff. Let's take a look at the command takeoff mode length. This is great for taking off things that you need to measure a length of, besides pipe, of course. Um, that pipe command works best for that. But in this case, let's say we want to take off like fin tube radiation, that's something you would need to measure, or a trench drain. Or in this case, I'm going to show you how to take off a trench. So I'm going to go and take off mode length, and I'm going to come along here and click along the pipe that I want to be able to put in the trench. Once I clicked off that length, I could end that run, and it gives me a choice of the items that are available in length. So we could use this for pipe or pipe branches. But I actually have a length assembly that I'm going to use. And these are the assemblies that are for the various different types of soil to generate excavation and backfill. So let me select this. And you can see here I have the type A soil assembly. It's asking me for the pipe size. And the pipe size was 4 inch. And it's asking me for the depth of the trench. And I'll make that 4 feet. So when I click OK, we can see now that it's taken off a type A soil trench and it is 36 feet 7 inches long and that was actually an assembly. So that's using takeoff mode length and again I'll just demonstrate that quick if I want to take this trenching area off and I could end that run. I'm going to choose that assembly and I'll select the assembly. It's prompting me for the pipe size and it's prompting me for the depth so it can calculate out the excavation and backfill for this and we can see that was a 30 foot long trench. So takeoff mode length, very handy for taking off those things you need to measure the length of. Let's look at a situation where I want to be able to put a reducing T in a vertical. So in this case, I've got this inch and a quarter pipe coming along here, and then it's going to drop down to feed this lavatory. And on the, off the side of that drop, we're going to come out with a one inch pipe to go feed this water closet. So I'm going to use the branch from with elbow to initially start this inch and a quarter branch coming off to this wall. Now at this point, I'm going to drop down the wall to about a two foot elevation for the rough in for that lavatory. So I'm going to use the change elevation command here, and I'm going to pick the two feet. Now I'll just end that run, and you can see right now that what it had done for us is it put a 90 degree elbow at the top. It put the 
inch and a quarter pipe 10 foot long because that was my 10 foot drop and then an inch and a quarter elbow at the bottom. Now I'm going to open this vertical up and in this vertical I need to insert a T to come off and feed this water closet. So we happen to have a reducing T button right here but if I didn't have that button or I wanted something else I could use the mouse menu to, to pick something from that but I'm going to use this reducing T. So now it's prompting me for the information on the reducing T. Well it's inch and a quarter coming in it's going to be a half inch feeding down to that lavatory and then a one inch in the branch coming off to that water closet. Now I'm going to raise this up because I don't want it down right on top of that elbow at the two feet. I'm going to put the item elevation in right here. Once I click OK, you can see it inserted this reducing T for me at the elevation that I had picked. Now this pipe right below the reducing T is the incorrect size. Once I click on this, it says it gives me the opportunity to reset the size on the bottom of that reducing T. And when I hit yes, we can come back here and see now it's got a half inch pipe running down to the lavatory and a half inch 90 degree elbow on the bottom. Now to complete coming off of that reducing T and out to the sides of the water closet, I'm going to use this command that says OK and branch from. So that says that this T is OK and I'm going to continue branching from it. So notice my drag line is now attached to the vertical and I can come out to this water closet and I'll stub out the wall and maybe I'll put a cap on it uh, for testing purposes. So that was inserting a reducing T into our vertical window. We could put any number of fittings in the vertical window. It was just handy to have this T reducing button. Let's look at a couple different ways of taking off valves while we're doing our piping takeoff. So in this case, I've got this heating hot water recirc line that's an inch and a quarter line. And I'm just going to simply use the start your own pipe to take it off and come along. Now when I reach a valve, it'd be handy if I just came down here and I would hit that ball valve and it would automatically put the little V in there for the valve and then I can come out to the end and in this case they're showing it to being capped. Notice when you put a cap in, you do not have to hit the, hit the end run. So there's that valve. Now in this case, I missed these valves when I initially took these lines off. So the easiest way to correct that would be actually to left click and hold down on that valve and drag and drop it on that pipe. And you'll see there's my ball valve and it's actually in the correct system that I drag and dropped it on. And I'll do the same thing for that domestic cold water line and I'll drag and drop that valve on there. So taking off the valves as you go along by choosing the valve when you get to them is perhaps the best practice. But if you miss them or you need to insert them afterwards, it's easy to use the drag and drop feature to get them into your takeoff. Let's look at the connect reconnect command. So in this piping scenario, I have a pipe that needs to connect from this pipe to this pipe. So they want me to connect the inch and a quarter hot water recirc to the inch and a quarter hot water line. So using the connect reconnect command, I have to verify my size first and this happens to be inch and a quarter. So we'll click OK and I'm going to say connect from here to there. Now if I take a look to see what it did, I could see here that it inserted the T there and it inserted the T automatically in that line and it put a length of pipe between those two, in this case two foot one inch. So that's connect reconnect. We hope you enjoyed this video. See what's next in our product tips playlist or visit map.trimble.com for even more product resources.